welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be providing you guys with some tips and tricks for instructing and commanding dressage that I've picked up on over like the last couple of years. I don't have anyone to demo with me right now because it's pretty early in the morning and everyone I know is either at school or like busy, so it's just me and my horse, but you know, that's fine, we will manage. Let's get right into it. Alright, first of all, you want to have clear and confident calling, and you want to know how you plan on calling. So that means having a clear mic, um, being loud enough so people can hear you, and not like mumbling, because how is someone going to be on time if they don't even know what move they're supposed to be doing? I know a lot of people use different types of commands, for example, like pre-go, or just a single command, like curl set and then go, and stuff like that, but I personally prefer to call it with like two commands and then one go, like curl set, curl set, go. I call the command two times just in case it cuts out, um, and it also reassures the people or the riders who are doing the move because, you know, they hear it twice and they remember it better in my opinion. Also something that is good is make sure you're preparing your line for what's coming up and they know what is expected. For example, if I want them to be doing a like curl set at A and they were around here, I'd probably say something like, we're going to do a curl set at A and then around when they get like this corner or approaching A, I would repeat that again, curl set at A and curl set curl set go so then i repeated my usual command there but i set them up so they knew what they were supposed to do at a they had enough time to process what they were supposed to be doing to do it correctly and you'll notice that what i like to do is i like to say a lot of ands like in between moves for example if I was to do like a B curl, which is a transition move from trot to canter, B curl set, B curl set, go, and go. So not everyone does this, I'm pretty sure it's just a me thing, but the reason I like to say a long and is because sometimes mics cut out, right? And you sometimes you don't know if like the commander's mic is cutting out or if their mic is just like silent and there's no background noise so you don't really know to expect a second go or not but if like for me if i'm saying and then someone always knows to expect a second go and if they can hear my and and i'm not cutting out then that means that they can like prepare and expect to hear the second go but if i cut out on my and then, like, if they hear at least some part of it, they know that the second go is coming, but, like, they know that I'm cutting out a little bit, so they'll be aware of that. I hope it makes sense, but that's how I like to call it. Um, and I like to call two goes for stuff like transition curls, or I like to call as many goes as possible or as necessary for certain moves, because it's easier and it's more accurate. Um, it makes the riders more confident on when they should be going into the second part of the move. For example, for a fate, I know a lot of clubs or like instructors teach it where after the first curl, there's no second go. As soon as you hit straight on the axis, you go into the second curl. But not everyone's hitting straight on the axis is going to be at the same time, especially if they get a, some part of the move wrong, or maybe their reaction time isn't as good, so it's going to be more off time than if you were to just call it with two goes. And I know it's not the same situation with every rider, because everyone's unique and like individual like that. Um, but that is just how I would do it. So, clear and confident calling. Then you want to have good explanations. So, not too lengthy, but not too brief. You should be aware of what level, like dressage level, you're teaching. And therefore, anything that should be added, would be added. 
but if you're teaching beginners, do not complicate things. Like maybe if you're teaching intermediate or advanced, you know, um, add in some like extra facts or specific details that could make the move look better or like the reasoning behind why you do what you do in that move. But for beginners, don't like blow up their minds, right? Because if they just start out and you like throw all of that pile of information on them, then you're definitely gonna confuse them. Like for example, if I was gonna teach a curl, I'm just gonna say it's a full circle, right? And you're holding your key. I'm not gonna make up some random story um, about like not tapping, not making it look blocky, or like, you know, having your horse's nose follow a specific line on the ground because that's not necessary. So it depends, like you have to be aware of what level you're teaching. So your explanations would be up to that level. Okay, then screen delay. So screen delay, <laughs> screen delay isn't really a piece of advice, but it's just so that you know it affects commanders too. It doesn't just affect the riders on the line. So commanders, you have to be aware of screen delay and you have to make your commands based on that. Because, for example, right, let's say that my line leader is right here on my screen and I am preparing to do a curl set. Because of screen delay, if my line leader appears to be right here on my screen, they'll actually be right here on their screens and that's too close to the wall. So even if it may seem like the line leader is further back, just be cautious because you don't want to mess up the line, right? So just be careful, have a good, like, at least one horse distance of space between, um, like, a horse and a corner or something like that to make sure you're setting your lineup for success. And obviously, this piece of advice isn't really included because it's kind of self-explanatory, but if you're planning on being an instructor, please, or like a commander, please make sure that you're aware of what the moves are in the first place like you have to be advanced in the level or in dressage yourself to be able to teach others and command because like how is a beginner gonna command right in order to instruct or command you have to have at least some kind of previous dressage experience or good dressage knowledge because you don't want to lead the people that you're teaching on the wrong track by accident and a little bonus tip, it kind of has to do with screen delay, but um, make sure that you're calling the moves earlier than you actually want the people in your line to do them because there's screen delay, but there's also like a call delay, especially if you're like voice commanding. Um, the time that you actually say the command will be a little bit later than when other people actually hear your command so they're gonna go later than you like actually have the command go out of your mouth and that is as expected right so make sure you call the moves a little bit earlier especially transition moves for example um so like calling a fate right you want to call a fate when they look so like if i was gonna do a fate left and it looks like this oh frick <laughs> let me do that again if i was to call a fate left and it looks like this this is on their screen by the way sorry on your screen so once they look like this on your screen where the front hooves are about to hit like their original access or their original line you call the second go because while they look like this on your screen they'll be like straight about on their screen so then it's the perfect timing for them to go into the second curl so for example fate left set fate left set go and then you'd call it about now go and then they would perfectly move into their second curl another idea uh is something i like to do with transition curls so after the first curl or in every transition you call the go when they're straight and facing their original line or about straight so for example a b curl to the right would be like go and go because keep in mind it not only 
has a call delay, there's a delay with um, changing your gate because your gate is not going to change as soon as you tap the gate change key on your keyboard, right? Um, it's going to take a little while. So if you call the move when they are here on your screen, they will be about here on their own screen. And then once they actually transition up into their gate, they'll be straight on the access or about somewhat straight. So it sets them up perfectly. Like B curl right set, B curl right set, go. And go. Yeah, see? So moving on, you wanna immediately correct any mistakes that anyone in the line is making. And you have to make sure you call out specific people in that line because some people aren't aware um, of the mistakes they're making. So if you don't call them out for it, they think they're doing the right thing. For example, let's say you have a huge line and then you go curl set, curl set, go. And then this person is like extremely late. And maybe so are other people. If you just say in general, make sure you watch your timing, well, what if this person thinks that their timing is, like, good? Because they don't know that the make sure you watch your timing, like, by the instructor was said specifically towards them and a few others. They will continue thinking that they're doing the right thing, therefore they're not going to fix that mistake. What I like to do is, when I call moves like that, or like any type of move, I will specifically remember the nicknames of people who've gone even like the tiniest bit late, and I'll call them out. Like for example, Caitlin, uh, Crystal, and uh, Eva, you guys were late, make sure you're watching your timing and going on go. I'd say something like that, and I'd keep picking people out, even if it's just the smallest mistakes, um, make sure you call them out for it, because if those small mistakes are left unattended, they could turn into worse, and you obviously don't want that. Immediately correct even the smallest mistakes, so if they're like, you know, not one horse away from the wall, um, make sure you're constantly, like, even though it might get repetitive, make sure that you're being consistent and you're going to like not pressure them but make sure you're constantly reminding them about things like being one horse away from the wall gaps again with saying you know fix your gaps make sure it's not too general because people aren't aware like if you just say it generally and you don't call them out for it they might think that they're in good gaps they don't know what they look like on other people's screens so if you call them out individually Make sure you keep doing that the second you notice their gaps getting off and you like you keep track of like the little uh, bumps in the road. Then also make sure that when you're picking out issues, you have to know what went wrong. You can't just say, oh, you did it wrong, right? You have to know what exactly they did wrong why they might have done it wrong, like what misunderstandings they could have had, and then teach them exactly why it happened and how to fix it. Um, obviously, anything you say has to depend on skill level, so you don't want to give beginners a whole speech on why like their curl went wrong. You can simplify it or anything that you need to as long as they get it, right? Um, for example, let's say I said comb set comb set go and the person does this i will then halt them and then i will explain and be like okay so i noticed that when the go is called you kind of turn diagonally and yes you did turn towards the correct wall but make sure it is a straight 90 degree line so you're making a right angle and you should be heading completely straight to the, the um, parallel wall and then i would demo it for them and I'd say like, so basically, on go, it should look like this, comb set, comb set, go. Like that. And then I'd have them try it again and again until they um, got it right or like, you know, finally understood the move. But that would be helpful because like, if let's say they just did a comb set and go and they still did this, and you're just like, wrong, try it again. They don't understand where they went wrong. They're just going to keep changing like 
a bunch of things every time, and even when they finally get it right, they're not going to know why they got it right. Make sure your explanations are, like, in-depth. Don't be afraid to halt the line in order to explain, my friends. The reason is because if, you know, especially with beginners, if they're focused, they're so focused on staying one horse away from the wall in their gaps and trotting in a straight line, they're not really going to like 100% listen to your explanation because they're so focused on what they're currently doing. So just halt them while you're explaining moves because that way they can actually pay your like their full attention. And then also always demo moves um, in a way that they can see it and demo it in every possible like manner. Like for example, I would like if I was teaching a keyhole, I'd show them a keyhole left and a keyhole right. And that way, um, if they're watching you, it makes more sense. And some people are more visual learners than like audio learn. <laughs> I don't even know what it's called, but you will have to show them. And I like to talk while I'm doing it. So, for example, if I was teaching a keyhole, it would, like, I don't want to do this, right? Keyhole left, set, keyhole left, set, go. Not when I'm first teaching a move. However, it should sound a little something like this. So here I'm going to try a keyhole left. Remember, it is three quarters of a curl. So if I keyhole left, I'm going to end up on the right side, uh, uh, doing a comb to the right of my original direction. So keyhole left, set, keyhole left, set, go. Notice how I am beginning my keyhole to the left and then heading on a comb to the right. And then I will show you guys an example of a keyhole to the right as well. So you're just going to keyhole right set, keyhole right set, go. This time I'm turning to the right, and now I'm going to comb to the left. So giving a little explanation um, while giving them a demonstration can really help. And I make up like my little um, ways, special ways to remember certain moves because that makes it more entertaining for them and it m makes it easier sometimes. It's nice to do a demo with them while they're moving as well. You don't have to halt them for every single mistake. It's just when you feel it's necessary. Like for simple moves or reviews, um, you don't really have to halt them because people will get like annoyed if you're halting them every five seconds to explain a tiny mistake to someone. But um, if like they're moving, you want to like canter up really, really far or in the like in the front of the line where everyone can see you and as you explain you're just going to do the move because while they're trotting past they can still see you and your demo that way you don't have to halt the line and even if you're giving a little review it doesn't necessarily have to be you teaching the move just giving a little review and demoing on the side helps a lot but again keep in mind there's screen delay so don't like don't trot like if if the line leader is right here, don't trot like right beside them because on your screen, if you're here, they're going to be here on their screen. So for the line leader, you're going to be behind them, which makes it harder for them to see you. And also keep in mind that beginners especially, or just general riders, they're not going to turn their screen around to see what you're doing. So make sure that if you're going to do a demo or whatever you plan on doing, do it in front of them where everyone can at least sort of see you. Because not if you do it like behind them, no one's going to turn their camera like 360 degrees just to see what you're doing. So make sure that they have to do the least amount of work possible and you're making it easier for them. I like to do moves with riders as well. Um, just why not, you know, like if I feel it's necessary, especially if it's a move we haven't done in a while and I just want to review. I will review moves like before I call them as well. So like if we were learning, like if we were learning transition curls and like after 10 minutes when I first taught the first B curl, 10 minutes after we finish learning the B curl, let's say, I decide that I want to review the moves. So I would be like, 
B curl set. Remember that it is a trot curl and decanter curl. You're just tapping up and you're holding that two curls. And go. And go. Count your six strides. Again, add your like little additions. Make sure you pick out like little mistakes they could make or remind them before they're able to even make those mistakes. So I, I really hope that makes sense. Um, but just small reviews, you don't need to give a whole on speech about it the second time because if you've already taught the move, all that you need to do to trigger their memory is like a few keywords and a brief review on what they're doing so that helps and as an instructor even when you're calling it you can just do it on the side because if you do that like obviously you're not going to be in the line but if they see you then it makes them more confident that they're doing the right thing um and then last but not least be patient and kind obviously have a good attitude don't be afraid to, you know, be strict, but also be aware that you should have different levels of strictness for different levels of dressage. Obviously, you would want to be more strict for, like, advanced riders um, compared to beginner riders. And praise is necessary, like saying good job and stuff like that. But don't praise them if they don't deserve it. Um, because if like you're saying good job for literally everything then they're gonna think hearing good job is just really common even if they're doing a bad job even if they're like actually good but they're just gonna expect to hear that but if you're actually impressed then you know obviously compliment them on it because it makes the riders feel very good about themselves and it motivates them to keep going and keep learning that is basically it for all the tips that I had to share with you guys today. I am pretty sure that there are more, but that is basically all I have as of right now. Um, generally, make sure you're setting your lineup for success because your students are basically like an extension of yourself. And for me as an instructor and a commander, I just want to see them succeed so that should be your main goal to help them but that is all for the video today guys thank you so much for watching i hope that you have learned quite a few things from today's video and you will apply them to commanding or instructing in the future thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day bye